Welcome to Governance with Gimmel, a podcast where we connect industry experts, technology partners, and thought leaders with listeners to share their insight on current market drivers and trends around information governance. In this episode of Governance with Gimmel, we will be discussing the impact that privacy laws are making on the information governance landscape. With data growing at such a rapid rate, it seems like new privacy laws are also spinning up just as quickly to ensure data is secure and protected. In a recent Gimmel survey, 54% of information governance professionals reported challenges with ensuring enterprise information is protected and compliant with privacy laws such as GDPR, CCPA, and DSARS. For these respondents and other organizations currently building a strategy around privacy laws, the first step to success is to gain a clear understanding of these laws and what could happen if they are not followed. With us today, we have Gimmel's own expert, Rick Wilson, who helps our clients today mitigate risks associated with privacy laws. Hi, Rick, and thank you for joining us on Governance with Gimmel. My pleasure, Shana. Thanks for inviting me. Yeah, and for those who may not be familiar, can we just start off with a short introduction with your background? Yeah, happy to. So it seems like I've been around for a long time. I hate to even admit this um, (laughs) audibly, but I started in the business in 1980, believe it or not. So that was my first computer job. I've been with Gimmel for the last 14 years in a succession of roles. I'm currently product manager for our information governance technology, Gimmel Discover. But most of that time that I've spent in uh, the Gimmel environment, I've been helping our customers and clients manage their electronic information, put strategies in place, develop rules and policies and so forth to uh, control and adhere to the kinds of policies and and, uh, privacy regulations that we're talking about today. I've also earned information governance certifications from ARMA and AIM along the way, try to keep that professional education up as well. That's amazing. 1980. So I guess it's safe to say that you've kind of been growing your skills and expertise as the as the technology landscape grows and as we yeah. you know as privacy laws start becoming more important. So just to get into the general meat of the conversation, can you give a little bit of background around the evolution of privacy laws, or maybe even just starting with kind of the big one with GDPR? Yeah. So, you know, it's hard to believe that if you go back four or five years, privacy laws in general were not a big deal at all. So let's maybe set the stage. As as you said, if you've heard of GDPR, most of our clients have, the acronym stands for the General Data Protection Regulation. This was legislation that was enacted by the European Union as a way of protecting the privacy of their citizens. So this was actually drafted and released in 2016, but it didn't go into effect right away. There was kind of a two year review and preparation period. So it was May of 2018 when GDPR actually went into effect for those countries in the EU. And in fact, countries outside the EU that manage information for EU citizens. So that means many U.S. companies also have to comply with aspects of GDPR. The whole idea behind the regulation is to place some very strict controls over how organizations manage personal data for the EU citizens. So as you might expect, if you take a look at that legislation, there are a number of sections, or as they refer to them, articles contained inside GDPR that kind of delineate what the uh, roles and responsibilities are for organizations who are managing personal data. As software vendors, we hear about these two most often. The first one is the right to know, which allows a citizen to request a detailed description of all the information that an organization contains about them or manages about them. So right to know is maybe that um, compliance step where you have to respond to a data subject access request. That's that official process that takes place when somebody wants to know what information you have about them. And then there's a parallel to the right to know called the right to be forgotten. And that implies that the citizen can request that all of the non-essential, and I'm doing air quotes there, private information 
that's being maintained about them be destroyed. Interesting thing about GDPR is it's served as a model for privacy legislation in a lot of other countries. So this was kind of the first one that we were aware of, and a lot of other organizations or a lot of other countries, I should say, took a look at GDPR and said, hey, this is a really good idea. So there are similar types of legislation today in, for example, Japan, Brazil, South Korea, and, and many others, in fact. And it's also probably the precursor, well, it's safe to say it's a precursor of our own California Consumer Protection Act here in the U.S. Well, and that's kind of a great segue um, onto the next question I had was, on a local state level here in the U.S., there is a large influence from GDPR to enact local privacy laws. Can you speak to the changing pace in the United States with other, other states following California's uh, direction with this? Yeah, for sure, Shane. It's been kind of an interesting journey, in fact. So, of course, CCPA, the California Act, is the best known one here in the U.S. That law was passed in 2018, and it came into effect fully in 2020. And its focus, similar to GDPR, is on requiring organizations to implement and maintain reasonable security procedures and practices. That's a quote from the legislation in protecting customer data. So the interesting thing about this is that it's been a little bit slower to pick up in the rest of the country. So in addition to California, there is approved or in effect privacy legislation in Colorado and Virginia right now. Most of the other states have introduced some privacy related measures into their legislatures. Um, Utah, for example, has passed a bill called the Utah Consumer Privacy Act. I don't believe that's been signed into law quite yet, but it's actually passed legislature and it was waiting for signature. And I think a lot of these efforts in the states were really sort of delayed or backburnered as the states mobilized to address COVID over the last couple of years. So we're really expecting them to be a resurgence of them in the next maybe year, year and a half as the states get back to considering things like privacy legislation as part of their state business. Well, and is it fair to say that, you know, when GDPR was really making its rounds, um, that a lot of organizations that were more local didn't have to worry about them, but now it's it's almost inevitable, right? That sometime or another, you, you're probably going to have to deal with a privacy law. Yeah, absolutely. And in, in, in fact, we're sort of expecting the country to adopt, you know, the, the U.S. as an entity to adopt some overriding federal privacy legislation at some point. So no news on that yet, but you know, it kind of seems like the natural trajectory as we move forward. So some companies have already started to put plans in place to, to comply with these laws, but for those who maybe hadn't had this as a, an initiative in the past, but are, are coming around now and, and really starting to think about how they can make sure they're complying with privacy laws, in your opinion, what's the first step to doing this? Yeah, it's, it's actually pretty clear. I, well, the first step, let me kind of back up before, before I get into you know, what I think the first action you should take is, the first step actually is deciding if the legislation applies to you, right? Because they're not, uh, the privacy legislation is not uniform. It doesn't apply to everybody everywhere. There's usually a series of stipulations that say, hey, you as an organization qualify and have to comply with this privacy legislation. So for example, CCPC, CCPA, I have too many C's there. CCPA applies to entities that do business in California that collect consumer personal data and meet at least one of three thresholds. They have an annual gross revenue in excess of 25 million. They buy, sell, or receive personal information of 50,000 or more consumers or households. And they earn more than half of their annual revenue from selling consumers' personal information. So clearly not every organization is going to meet that metric. So you may be exempt, you may not have to comply. So that would be kind of the first step. But, but assuming you are, and if, if you've kind of gone through that process and said, hey, we do have an obligation to comply with GDPR or CCPA or Virginia's privacy law, whatever it may be, our first recommended step is to go out and do a data map, a data mapping exercise. So it's really important to understand what information you're maintaining in your organization. You would think that would be pretty routine, but our experience with clients has been that it's not in many cases, especially a larger organization that's very dispersed 
in a lot of geographic locations. They may not know what databases are being kept that might have consumer information inside them. So a data mapping exercise is geared towards helping you identify where that information is, what the nature of the information is, and how you can access it. Because at the end of the day, if you are required to comply with the regulation and these requests start coming in from consumers who want to know what information you have, you've got to be able to fairly rapidly identify that and respond to those requests. If not, you can be subject to you know, some pretty stiff penalties in some cases. Well, Rick, thank you so much for kind of sharing your insight on privacy laws. As we wrap up this episode, you know, it's been some really great and dense information, kind of a great little snippet. Is there anything you'd like the listeners to take away with? Well, of course, you know, I'd like to say that Gimbal's got some great tools to help you get through that data mapping exercise, scan your network shares, scan your workstations, identify and find information. But in terms of compliance in general with the privacy legislation, uh, probably the best thing that you can do as an organization is go out and find a legal partner who specializes in privacy and consult with them to determine if you are subject to these regulations and identify what specifically are you going to have to comply with. And then from there, you can start to build your compliance plan. Wonderful. Well, thanks again, Rick. For our listeners, if you'd like more information on building a strategy to comply with privacy laws, please check out our related resources below.